In this experiment, you will determine the molar volume of one mole of hydrogen gas under standard conditions, as well as the value of the ideal gas constant R experimentally. The ideal gas law describes the relationship between several variables that are important to know when experimenting with gases. These are the pressure in atmospheres, the temperature in degrees Kelvin, the number of moles, and the volume in liters. There is also the ideal gas constant, R, which has a value of 0 0.08206 liters times atmospheres per mole Kelvin. These are combined in the ideal gas law equation, PV equals nRT. If you solve the equation for any variable, you should find that the units of the rest of the variables cancel, giving you the desired units for your value. Most gases obey this law at low pressures and relatively high temperatures. If temperature and pressure are kept constant, the volume of a gas is directly proportional to the number of moles present. At values of standard temperature and pressure, which is defined as 0 degrees Celsius or 273.15 degrees Kelvin and one atmosphere of pressure, one mole of an ideal gas occupies a volume of 22.4 liters. In this experiment, you will use the reaction of solid magnesium with sulfuric acid to form a known amount of hydrogen gas. Once measured, this amount will be used to find the moles of gas produced and an experimental value for the ideal gas constant R. This will be accomplished using the setup shown on the next slide. As shown in the diagram, your reaction flask will be connected to an inverted burette filled with water. The gas will displace water in the burette so the volume of gas produced in the reaction can be directly measured. To begin, set up a ring stand and attach a burette clamp. Fill a 400 milliliter beaker with approximately 250 mils of water and place it at the base of the stand. Fill a burette with water and invert it, placing the end into a beaker of water as shown. If the water level is above the 50 mil mark on the burette, drain it until it is below the 50 mil mark and read the initial volume of water in the burette to two decimal places. Rinse the 125 mil Erlenmeyer flask with the ionized water, making sure it is clean before use. Using a graduated cylinder, add 25 mL of 1 molar sulfuric acid to the flask. In a clean glass vial, accurately weigh out 0.025 to 0.035 grams of magnesium turning. Record your mass. Carefully place the vial into the flask using tweezers, not allowing any sulfuric acid to come into contact with the metal. Seal the flask with a stopper, as shown and connect the rubber tube to the glass connector, which should also be connected to the bottom of your burette. The volume of gas collected will be equal to the volume of water displaced during the reaction. This can be determined by subtracting the final volume read from your burette from the initial volume. Because atmospheric pressure varies slightly from day to day, you will use a barometer to accurately measure the pressure on the day you perform your experiment. The barometer you will be using has a vernier scale, which must be read correctly to get an accurate reading. Your first number will be read from the bottom of the scale, where the zero marker falls on the right-hand scale. In the picture shown, the zero falls between 708 and 709, making your first integer 708. This scale can be read to one decimal place, which can be found by looking to see which gradations on the right-hand scale line up best with the ones on the left-hand scale. In the picture, you can see that only the gradation for 0 0.9 lines up with any of the gradations on the right-hand side. This means your decimal place is 0 0.9, giving you an overall reading of 708.9 millimeters of mercury. Because the hydrogen gas formed in this reaction will also be saturated with water vapor, the vapor pressure of water has to be accounted for when determining its pressure from this reaction. The hydrostatic pressure of the column of water also needs to be included in your correction. Therefore, using Dalton's law of partial pressures, the sum of the pressure of hydrogen gas, water, and the hydrostatic pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure. This equation can then be solved to find the pressure of hydrogen gas. P bar, or atmospheric pressure, you know from reading the barometer. The partial pressure of water vapor can be looked up in the CRC handbook at the temperature of the water used in the experiment. The hydrostatic pressure can be found by measuring the height of the column of water in your burette above the beaker with a ruler. This measurement should be recorded in millimeters. This value can be converted to millimeters of mercury by dividing it by 13.6, which is the specific gravity of mercury. 
When you have completed this procedure, repeat it, but trade responsibilities with your lab partner. From your experimental values of pressure, volume, temperature, and number of moles, you can calculate the value of R for your experiment. The moles of hydrogen gas formed during the reaction can be calculated using the equation of the reaction and the mass of the magnesium used for a given trial. Be careful to use correct stoichiometric ratios when converting from moles of magnesium to moles of hydrogen. The volume of hydrogen gas at standard temperature and pressure can be found by comparing the values of the gas at STP to your experimental values and solving for V1, as shown on the slide. Rearrangement of the ideal gas equation for each situation gives the relationship shown. Use the temperature and pressure values of an ideal gas and values of temperature, pressure, and volume you recorded during your experiment to find the volume of hydrogen gas at STP. Finally, division of the molar volume by the number of moles you used will give you the volume of one mole of hydrogen gas at STP. Many of the experiments this semester will be performed in pairs. Data will be collected in pairs, but reports must be completed individually. Any copying of another student's lab will result in both parties being given a zero on the report. If this behavior continues, it can lead to more serious consequences, including expulsion from the lab or course and it being put on your permanent record or transcript.